Excuse me, please. Would you like my seat? Thank you. Oh, we're not there yet. I think the current's failed. Oh. Sorry. That's quite all right. <clears throat> Excuse me, but didn't you used to go to work on a 13 bus? Yes, I did. Yes, I thought so. I used to be on that route. I'm a conductor. They transfer me to the 24s now. I often used to see you. Don't you remember me punching your tickets? No, I'm afraid I don't. What's the trouble? Break down. How long are we going to be held up here? Can't say, sir. Not long, I hope. Oh, do you think we'll get to Hampstead before eight? Doubt it, miss. You may have to walk there. Well, let's walk, then. This young lady's in a hurry. No one must leave the train till I get instructions. Maybe be stuck down here for hours. Oh, don't you worry, miss. The boyfriend will wait for you. <laughs> Not so sure as he will. Well, if he doesn't wait. Here. Well, you're over an hour late, you know. Yes, I know. Thanks awfully for coming up with me. Well, that's all right. Aren't you going to have a look round now you are here? I think I'll go home. Okay. I'll walk along with you. Wouldn't you rather stay at the pair? No, I'd rather go along with you. All right, then. What I told you just now is the truth, you know. I'm not in the habit of talking to strange girls on trains. As a matter of fact, I don't go in for girls very much. I've heard that one before. No, it's true. Shall I tell you something? When I was on the 13 bus, I used to look out for you every morning, when we got to Swiss Cottage. How many other girls did you look out for? Only you. I remember you were away for a week once. I was terribly worried because I thought perhaps you were ill or something. Yes, that's right, last June. Fancy you remembering that. I remember it all right. You did give me a dirty look on that train, though. I'm sorry. As a matter of fact, I thought you looked rather nice. Did you really? Mm. Do you know, I seem to think that I've seen your face somewhere before. Not in buses or anything, but... I know. Wasn't you a photograph in the paper the other day? Aren't you the bus conductor that was decorated? Yes. Come on, you two lovebirds. Have a go. Mother won't know. What about you? Well, I... Good. That's the idea. Have your choice. They're all thoroughbreds. Now, come along. Pass along the car there. Any more fares, please? Same lodge. <laughs> How do you like being a bus conductor again after the army? Oh, it's all right. There's always plenty going on inside a bus. I'm interested in people. But I've got other ideas. 
I only look upon this as a temporary sort of job. What are you going to do then? Engineering. I should be a fully qualified engineer if it hadn't been for the war. But I'm making up for lost time, you know, night classes and things. How long will it take you? About a year, if I work hard enough. Do you live at home? No, I'm in lodgings in Victoria. Do you do your own cooking and everything? No, I can always get fish and chips around the corner. That's not so good for you. What's your job? I work in a gramophone shop in the city. Doesn't it get in your nerves, all that music, day in and day out? No, I love it. What do you like, classical or dance music? Classical. It makes you feel sad and yet as though something wonderful is just around the corner. I can't explain it, but Victor understands. He's the friend I was meeting here tonight. Oh, really? I suppose he takes you out to theatres and operas and things. He does sometimes. Sounds as if he's got a lot of money. Yes, I suppose he has. Bango, my hopes of taking you in the balcony and tea at the corner house. <laughs> I did. Would you like some ice cream? I would. I love it. Ordinary ice or chalk ice? Chalk ice, please. Well, I'll go and get you one. Oh, what did you say your name was? I didn't, but it's Anne. Anne. Yeah. Mine's Jack. Now, hurry up there. Room for a few more. Don't do without me. Now, you, sir, don't be shy. Some chalk ice, please. Victor! Are you ill? What is it? You're late. Why didn't you come when you said you would? I couldn't help it. There's a hold-up on the underground. Has anything happened? What do you mean, happened? Nothing's happened except that I've been hanging about in this dirty place for an hour and a half waiting for you. Oh, I know. I'm so sorry, but the underground broke down. Have you been at the fair all the time? I told you I had, didn't I? I gave you three quarters of an hour, then I went into the boxing booth, came out and went straight back to where we said we'd meet. But I was there a few minutes ago and I didn't see you. Are you trying to tell me I'm a liar? No, Victor, of course not. All I said was that I was there a few minutes ago and I didn't see you. For heaven's sake, don't make a scene in public. One day everybody's staring at us. What is the matter with you? What is the matter with you? Stupid fools of women. Let's get out of this place. It's getting on my nerves. Just a minute, Victor. I was talking to someone on the roundabout and I must just say goodbye. I told you I can't stand this place another minute. All right, Victor, all right. Jock, got your trains running yet? Yes, all right now. Unlucky night tonight. You're telling me. That's right. So you're coming out. Nice looking girl you had with you too. Thanks. Has she been back? No. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Wouldn't be likely to miss that one. Why, what have you done with her? What's the matter with you? Oh, nothing. Hello, hello. What's this? Gee, babe. What's that been, an accident? I don't know. Has the last train gone? No, no, you're all right. Come on, get in the lift. Come What's on. happened, do you know? Woman's been found murdered up in the east. Murder? Oh, horrible. Come on, come never on, mind about the happened. murder now. You'll read all about it in the papers tomorrow. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Lovely day, Johnson. Yes, sir. How's the boy? Fine, thank you, sir. Good. Woman found strangled, all the audible details. Another murder, another murder. Woman found strangled, all the audible details. Another murder, another murder. Hello, Nelly. Hello, sir. Your usual, Mr. Colgrove. Yes, please. <coughs> yes, that beautiful. Thanks. And could I have that spray as well, please? Certainly, sir. Oh, Mr. Colebrook, I confirmed that appointment for 3.30 this afternoon. Ah, good, Miss Willis. Uh, what about a spray for you? Oh, thank you very much. I'll have that one, if I may. That's all right, Nancy. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. What a nice gentleman. Much too nice. I'm sure the wrong sort of girl will get hold of him. Good evening, madam. Good morning. Ah, let me see. That record I wanted to get. It's a jazz record. It's called Are You My Boogie Baby Woogie? You mean, Are You My Boogie Woogie Baby, don't you, madam? Well, 
Yes, I suppose I do. Miss Ball, will you get Are You My Boogie Woogie Baby for this lady, please? Huh? The other assistant will attend you. Thank you. Can I help you, sir? Good morning. There are one or two records I'd like to hear, please. Oh, yes, sir. Have you got the catalogue number? I'm sorry about that, my dear. I don't think we've got that in stock, sir. I'll just see if you can't in the booth over there. Have you a record called A Voice in the Night? You might have. I'll find out. Thank you. I'll take him in for you, dear. You'll do nothing of the sort. You are an old maniac, keeping him all to yourself. Yes, Miss Fielding, can you find the record you require? Yes, thank you. I've got it. Am I forgiven? Yes, that's all right, Victor. Only I was rather upset. I'd never known you so bad-tempered before. Look, I'd best put this record on in case her ladyship starts snooping round. That was bad temper, but how would you feel if I kept you waiting an hour and a half? It was only an hour. And I wouldn't have gone on snapping your head off when once you'd explained. Just to make you feel better. Oh, Victor, they're lovely. Listen. Dark red suits you. Thank you. What about coming to some lunch? I'd love it, Victor. We we'll take a cab to the Savoy. Oh, I didn't come here dressed for anywhere like that. No, but you always look charming. Not only that. But now I always feel I'm going to make a fool of myself in those places. So do I, but I enjoy it. <laughs> Different from you. I've got an air about you. So you come from some grand family. Oh, yes, very grand. Very grand indeed. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, nothing. Just something that came into my head. Oh. Well, I'd like to lunch anyway. I'll be free in ten minutes. There. Yeah. Yes? You know, there's something about you. Something that makes me feel quite different, Miss Ward. You mean, than you do towards your other girlfriend? Yes, you see, they're not friends, merely acquaintances. Miss Fielding, will you please come and see to these catalogues lying about all over the counter? Yes. I've got your letter here. My name's Conway. Uh, don't come too near me, sir. I've got a nasty cold. Oh, really? I'm sorry to hear that. Come in, come in. Come and sit down. Take your coat off. Your coat's off. Yes, uh, perhaps I'd better. Otherwise, I won't feel the benefit. Well, I'll take my summer coat off. I'll keep my summer coat on top, see. You probably caught a chill being out so late on Hampstead Heath. I have a cigarette. Oh, thanks very much. Thank you. I'll keep it to have with me coffee after dinner. Hmm. Sorry to drag you out of a warm bed. But if you had gone to the police when you found the body, you'd have been spared all this inconvenience, wouldn't you? You gave me quite a turn. I reckon it was that that brought on the chill. I went all of a sweat when I seen it. Yes. What were you doing on the heath that time of night? Uh, uh, only collecting, sir. Collecting? Yes, sir. Uh, cigarette ends and such. Yes, I've seen cigarette ends. How about the such? Did you find anything else? Uh, I didn't find nothing else, sir. No, it was very disappointing. There was nothing worth speaking of. That's a very good linen handkerchief you've got. What? Oh, yes, that's right, sir. Where'd you get that handkerchief? I can't quite remember where I found this one. Ah, so you found it. Where? Come on, come on. There's nothing to be afraid of. Where'd you find it? Hampstead Heath? Yes, I think it was. Last Monday night? Yes. 
Are you sure of that? Uh, yes, sir. Did it find near the body? Did you find it near the body? Well, it wasn't exactly near, and yet on the other hand, you wouldn't say it was far. Uh, it was what you might call within a radius of the body. Only I felt the cold coming on, and this looked fairly clean, so I picked it up, and I've been using it ever since. Uh, it's just come in handy. Put it on there, will you? Job for you, Ellis. Lovely job for you. Sullivan. Sir. Now take this and wash it. Or get it washed. And check up on that laundry marker. Yes, sir. Yes, but not for you. Saucy monkey. It was the laundry, madam. That seems to be all right. I expect Mr. Victor will be in to dinner, Florrie. And my sister's going to stay. Oh, then I'll have to make another sweet. Mrs. Cooper doesn't like my raspberry blancmange, I know. No, give her the blancmange. I don't see why she should turn up her nose at it. Who's turning their nose up? Are you talking about me? I was just saying that you always turn up your nose at Florrie's remorse. Don't you let her put you against me, Florrie. Nothing of the sort. That's all right, madam. Victor doesn't usually stay in to dinner when I'm here. I don't think he likes me. Oh, my dear, what nonsense. He's always rude to me. You watch. Sheer imagination. If Victor doesn't kiss me when he comes in, I'm going to have it out with him. No, you won't, Mabel. You'll do nothing of the sort. Why not? I wouldn't say anything to a person's face that I wouldn't rather say behind their back. I know that. Oh, don't always pick me up. You know perfectly well what I mean. I will not have you upsetting Victor. You've always been the same with him ever since he was a boy. You keep him under a glass case. He mustn't be disturbed or annoyed or upset. Why shouldn't he be? Other people are. You're frightened of his temper. That's what it is. Do you remember those wicked taddies he used to get into? Well, he was only a child. He still is. That may be the man who telephoned to know when Victor would be home. Mabel, stop flicking your ash into the sugar and come into the sitting room. How you can live with the kitchen so near to the sitting room, I can't think. You know perfectly well it's to help Florrie. Every time you come into this house, you criticize it. And me. And Victor. Now you're imagining things. Well, I suppose if I'd married a man whose father made a fortune out of pickles, I should have had a large modern apartment like you. If you start sneering at Hector's father, I'll have something to say about the precious Colebrook family. Yes. How about old William Colebrook, eh? Mabel, if you ever dare mention that, I'll never speak to you again. Mr. Conway, madam. Mrs. Colebrook, nice yes. boat driving. Oh, yes, how do you do? Uh, this is my sister, Mrs. Cooper. How do you do? How do you do? Victor ought to be in any moment now, Mr. <laughs> Won't you come and sit down? Thank you. Hello, Mother. Sorry I'm so late. It's all right, darling. But I hope you haven't been working too hard. Auntie Mabel's dropped into dinner. Hello, Aunt Mabel. Oh, thank you, Victor. Very happy. And uh, here's a friend come to see you. Mr. Uh, uh, Conway. Conway? 
No, you haven't forgotten me. We've never met. No, we haven't, have we? Still, the name sounds familiar. I hope I haven't come at an awkward time. Not at all. You two will want to talk, so I'll take Mabel into the kitchen and we'll see that Florrie doesn't spoil the dinner. Don't bother about me, Mother. I've got to go out. Oh, Victor, not again. I'm afraid, sir. Oh, what a pity. Oh, well, so long, Mabel. Perhaps we'll see you later. Oh, yes. Photograph of you. Not bad, is it? Do sit down, won't you? Thanks. Have a drink. Oh, uh, no, thanks. Cigarette? Oh, uh, no, I won't smoke. Well, what can I do for you? Well, as a matter of fact, I happen to be connected with Scotland Yard. Oh, what am I supposed to have been doing? Uh, uh, nothing like that. I rather hoped you might be able to help us. Oh, yes? Of course, you've read about these murders in the paper. Oh, uh, yes, who hasn't? Well, this strangler fellow's got us rather guessing, you know. And I'm very anxious to get in touch with anyone. I've reason to believe was in the vicinity when the crimes were committed. And this last girl, as you know, was murdered on Hampstead Heath on Monday night, not far from the fairgrounds. What part of the Heath exactly were you on, Mr. Colebrook? Oh, so you know I was there then. How on earth did you find that out? Oh, we get to know a lot of things. After all, that's our job. Well, there's no need to beat about the bush, Chief Inspector Conway. If you want to know if I went near the place where the woman's body was found, I did. As a matter of fact, I went to the fair, stayed there for an hour, then I got bored and went for a stroll. I wanted some fresh air. I did pass quite near the scene of the murder. I recognized the spot from the newspaper photograph. Oh, was anyone with you? No, I was alone. Hmm. Well, take a look at this photograph of the murdered girl, Mr. Gerbrook. It may give you a clearer idea than the pictures in the paper. Striking looking girl, isn't she? She was the fourth, wasn't she? No, the sixth. Now, that is, if you include the two last year, who were obviously victims of the same man. Well, of course, I was forgetting that. Now, throwing your mind back to that walk of yours, Mr. Cobo, can you remember seeing her or anyone like her on the heath? No, in fact, I can't. It's not very surprising, really. According to the press, she must have been murdered about an hour before I left the fair. Yes, but before then, when you were at the fair. No, in fact, I can't remember seeing anybody in the least like her. Uh, during your walk, did you keep to the path or did you cross the grass at all? The path. Are you sure? Oh, yes. I may have wandered off to a shortcut a bend or two. As a matter of fact, I believe I did. And you're quite positive that during the evening you never saw this girl? Quite. Well, that's that. I'm afraid I haven't been of much use to you, Inspector. Well, no fault of yours, that. But you might have saved us a lot of trouble if you had come to us instead of leaving us to find you. After all, we did put an appeal in the papers, you know. Excuse me. Bella? Who? Inspector Conway. Oh, it's for me. Thanks. Hello, yes? Miss speaking. Oh, don't you know my voice yet? Huh? What do you mean we've had a postcard? I mean a postcard from the murderer, sir. It's addressed to Scotland Yard, the big four, the big four, with a query after big. It says, you poor half-wits, six murders, and you haven't even a clue. There'll be another corpse tonight. Yeah. Right, I'll come straight back. I'm so sorry, I have to let him know where I am. Look here, there is one way you might be able to help us. Uh huh. You know, we keep a record of all the ladies and gentlemen that go through our hands. The rogues gallery. Well, part of it. I wonder if you don't mind coming along to the yard and having a look at it. You might just spot a face you remember on that walk of yours. Of course, when would you like me to come? Well, I would have suggested tonight, only I heard you say you got an appointment. Well, I have, as a matter of fact, but uh, I should be free by about ten. I suppose that'd be too late. <laughs> Not a bit of it. Scotland Yard is always open. We leave it to that, then. Thank you, Mr. Coverbrook. I'd appreciate it. There's one thing I'd appreciate. Oh, really? What's that? You're telling me how you know I was on Hampstead Heath last Monday night. <laughs> That'd be giving away professional secrets. But people are very careless, you know.
seems a very pleasant man, dear. What does he want? Yes, he's gone. I know that, dear. I asked you what he wanted. Who wanted? Nothing in particular. Then was it uh, business? Yes, it was business, in a way. Yes, business. Nothing important, though. Nothing important. Victor. Yes, Mother, what is it? I know it's a bore, Mabel coming to dinner, but... I do wish you wouldn't go out tonight, dear. Why not? Oh, I don't know. Just a silly feeling I have, but... You're never at home now, darling. Always wandering out at night. I call it wandering, Mother. I go out. I don't wander. All right, dear. Take care of yourself, darling. I will. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Mr. Victor won't be in for dinner after all, Flory. Very good, madam. <laughs> I told you, didn't I? Nothing to do with you, Mabel. Victor was very nice to you when he came in. Isn't he getting like his father, Maudie? There's something about his eyes. No, I don't think he's in the least like Harry. I never have. Victor's never taken after the Colebrooks. He belongs to our side of the family. He's completely an Elliston. Still, I'm worried about him. Oh, why, Matt? She's just a fuss pot. She treats that boy as though he's made of glass. He's so restless, Laurie. Seems as if he can't stay in the house. Goes wandering about by himself almost every evening. How do you know he's by himself? It's such a lovely summer, madam. Probably wants to be out in the air. I wish I could think that, Laurie. Ah, there he is. He's Jack Williams. He's been with us since he came out of the army. Character excellent. He came out of my station with a girl on the night of the murder about nine o'clock. And he came back at midnight, alone. And he was in a state, too. Right. Now, don't say another word until you're spoken to. Hello. What are you doing? Williams? Yes? You were off duty last Monday night. That's right. Why? I'm from Scotland Yard. I'd like you to tell me exactly where you were and what you did on that occasion. Monday night? Well, I'm not likely to get that in a hurry. That was exactly. about... Exactly. You were with a girl that night. Yes. What's her name? Anne? Anne who? I don't know. She didn't tell me her other name. You see, we missed each other somehow on the heat. Where she lived? I don't know. You know where she worked? Well, that's strange, isn't it? So you can't produce anybody to vouch for your movements that night? Oh, she could do that all right. If only I could find her again. Hmm. 
Do you ever remember seeing this girl in the underground before? Oh, she always comes to work by bus. Your bus? No such luck. She did when I was on the 13s, but I've been transferred. But I do know she... she works in a gramophone shop somewhere in the city. Oh, she does, does she? She works in a gramophone shop somewhere in the city, on the 13 bus route, and she answers to the name of Anne. Right. Well, if there is a girl, I'll find her. Oh, good. Can I come with you? You're coming with me. Does that mean I'm under suspicion for something or other? Oh. Yes. That shoe hurts. Why don't you sit down for a bit and take it off? Oh, yes, thanks, Tom. I don't think I could have walked another yard without giving my poor feet a rest. Oh, I wish now I'd taken the bus. But it would have meant breaking into my last pound. <laughs> What's so funny about it? Think of it, Tom. Walking five miles and it was an inch on hard pavement. And then to tell me I would not suit because I was Scotch. The cheek of it. She was only Irish herself. Why did you bother about her wretched job? Oh, it was the hospital people made me go. Did I tell you I could get you dozens of better jobs than you could yourself? I am no Tom. And I believed you. Only the girl that shares my room at the hospital said you were having me on. And that I was a fool if I thought I should ever see you again. Oh, so you told her about me, did you? What exactly did you say to me? Oh, just how genteel you were. Did you say anything else? No, just that your name was Tom Marr and how you were a motor engineer in all the garage of your own. Did you tell her what I looked like at all? Well, I said you were awful kind looking. You don't mind my having told her about us, do you? No, of course not. Did you tell her that I had a little scar here on my neck? Oh, you know, Tom, why would I do that? Isn't it lovely here, with the moonlight streaming down? I never dreamed I could be so happy. Though what an educated gentleman like you sees in a girl like me, I do not know. I'm not pretty, I know, nor clever, and I haven't any nice clothes. Whatever you are, whatever you aren't, you're the sort of girl I was looking for. Oh, do you really mean that, Tom? Of course. What's wrong? Nothing. You feeling rested now, Jeannie? Oh, yes, thanks, Tom. Do you want us to go on? No. Stay just where you are. Plenty of time. No hurry. Oh, look at that big cloud up there. It'll hide the moon. Yes, in a few moments. I've been watching it. It's such a black one, too. It'll make it nearly dark. Yes, it will. How green with envy all the other girls will be when I tell them I'm going as waiter at such a grand big hotel. And that it was you that got the situation for me. Hmm? Oh, yes. Oh, look. The clouds just beginning to cover the moon. Yes. Just beginning to cover the moon. And I'll be able to send the money home again. I do not know how they've managed since I've been ill. And it's all due to you, Tom. I've had this on the brain ever since I held you whistling it the other day. Do you know the words? Of course I do. I hear a voice in the night, so mysterious and deep, I am on that it's dead. On this one dusk until dawn. <laughs>
why you wanted to leave. The joint was just beginning to hop. Oh, it was too crowded. There was no room to dance. Old Faithful erupts every eight days. Oh, come on. You've smoked enough. I think I'll go down there and ask that Joe for a light, huh? Oh, Nick, you can't. Why not? It's lonely. Excuse me, bud. Got a light? Thanks a lot. Hope I uh, didn't disturb you. See what I mean? What's your deadline for getting home? Oh, I must be in by 11 or Mum will be wild. Oh, no, Nick, not here. Okay. But where? the nastiest piece of work in the old chamber of horrors. In fact, quite the nastiest type of gentleman you could possibly hope to meet. I hope none of you here ever have occasion to meet the present holder of the office. <laughs> Very well, then. During his lifetime, this highly respected citizen was paid by Her Gracious Majesty's government to do to death by strangulation 45 human beings, men and women. He became known by the title of the Happy Hangman, owing to the fact that he took such a liking to his work that he was never happy unless he was strangulating somebody by the neck till they was dead. Now then, before we close, we just got time to pass along to the Camden Town murder, where she cut the throat of her rival and the poor little baby, pushed the bodies in a go-kart all the way up Abbotstock Hill and dumped them in Belsize Park. Thanks for coming along. I didn't have much choice. <laughs> uh, Sullivan, show Mr. Williams off the premises. Oh, by the way, are you on duty at the same time tomorrow? Yes, sir. Well, if we find this girl, Anne, you wouldn't mind coming along again? It would be a pleasure. I dare say. Good night. Good night, sir. There's a bus conductor coming down with Sullivan. Have him tailed. Checked up on those people? Yes, sir. Stone is in Brighton. Mike Holden was celebrating his wedding anniversary. Mm. How about that fellow, Marcy Knight? Cast iron alibi. In hospital, recovering from appendix operation. <sighs> All right, Evan. Right. Yeah? Cobalt. Ah, he's here, is he? All right, show him all the photographs of our possibles, will you? Did they let you have those extra men for covering the parks tonight, sir? No. Madness. The commissioner thinks some crank sent this postcard. Why should this fellow want to write and tell us about it for Anne? That's what I've been trying to explain to them upstairs. Being a murderer, he knows we think of him as the lowest type imaginable. So he sends us this sort of thing to prove that he's cleverer than any of us. Far beyond us, in fact. Mm hmm. Yes, it's a theory, sir. Thank you, Sullivan. Oh, excuse me, sir. There was something I wanted to tell you. Yes? I happened to be talking about it to my missus last night. Talking about it? Well, the Strangler case, sir. You have to tell your wife everything. Why don't you keep your mouth shut? Well, I only happened to mention a man named Colebrook, and 
She said she's certain she's heard that name before somewhere in connection with murders or something. She's a great one for murders, my missus. <laughs> she can give you all the details of Jack the Ripper. you wanted Rip to tell me, Sullivan? She says she's certain she's got the name Colebrook in the back of her mind somewhere. Mm. She may have it at the back of her mind. We haven't got it in record. Mm. Oh, there's one other thing, sir. Yeah? Of course, we can take this at what it's worth. Okay. My missus says she's certain there's going to be another murder tonight. Your wife isn't a strangler by any chance, Sullivan. Not that I know of, sir. Only she's got the feeling, that's all. She's septic. Um, psychic. Mm, I'm sure there's something the matter with her. Mr. Colbrook thinks he saw this man on Hampton Heath last Monday night. Where is he? He's outside. Well, show him in, show him in. Will you come in, please? Good evening, Mr. Colbrook. Good evening. So good of you to have come. Seems to be a lucky break for us. Uh, Sergeant Sullivan, Mr. Colbrook. Uh, do sit down. Thanks. Oh, give me those, Walters. You can come back home later. Thank you. Uh, how's the US? Do you mind if I smoke a cigar? <laughs> no, not at all. You say something seems to have done that a bit of no good, doesn't it? I'm afraid so. Yeah, here you are. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So you think you've seen this fellow before, eh? Yes, I'm certain I saw him last Monday night. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid this man has a very sound alibi. Inspector, I should be very chary of identifying anybody in a case like this, unless I was actually positive. But I swear on my oath that I saw him, or his double, last Monday night in Regent's Park. <laughs> you mean Hampson's Heath? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, well, it's bad luck about the two, Mr. Cobrook. Thanks. Anyway, I hope you've had a good time in our rogues gallery. Yes, it's most interesting. Quite an academy. I'm afraid we've trespassed on your good nature as it is bringing you here at this time of night. So I won't keep you. Good night. Sorry I couldn't be more helpful. Uh oh, that's all right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Who does he think is identified, sir? Marcy Knight. Marcy Knight? Hmm. Helps a lot, doesn't it? Speaking. What? All right, I'll be right down. What now, sir? Another strangler murder. Get your hat. Excuse me, sir. Have you finished with the mousy night file? It's on my desk. Where was that? My missus tipped it. Yeah, perhaps your missus would like to take my job. Where is it this time? Regent's Park. Regent's Park. Book. Dead long, Doctor? About three hours, it's a rough guess. Not as near as you can get it? Yes. He's been dead not under two hours and not over four. Mm. No doubt about the cause of death, of course. No, that's pretty obvious. Manual strangulation. Who found the body? Park over here, sir. What time is that? About a quarter to twenty past eleven, sir. Mm. Found out who she is? Yes, sir. We found her identity card in a bag. She's a Jeannie McLaren for local working girls' hostel. Did you take her shoe off for any reason, Doctor? I know nope. she took us off, sir, when I found her. No sign of any struggle. No footprints either, of course. This fellow's had all the luck so far. Something, sir? Yes, I think so. You remember what was in my ashtray when we left the office? In your ashtray? Yes, look at that. Looks like a bit of dried leaf to me, sir. It is. Cigar leaf. Now we might be getting somewhere. Who the devil's been in this office? Only me, sir. I must have dozed off. Did you take a damaged cigar from that ashtray? No, sir. I didn't even see it. Is anything wrong, sir? Was it very important? Important enough to hang a man, or I'm very much mistaken? Go on, man. Look for the blasted thing. Look for it. Yes, Sergeant. Well, well I look. Just everywhere. Everywhere. Well, so much for the clue of the battered cigar. Funny thing, I was saying to my missus yesterday. Yes, you'd better go and talk to her in bed. I'm going to get some sleep. You better do the same. Excuse me, sir. I've got to be up early and find that girl Williams that was on the heath with him. Williams? 
Bus conductor, sir. Uh, all right, good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Excuse me, sir. Oh, Walters. Yes, sir? You were in this office when I left with Sullivan. Yes, sir. Did you see a broken cigar in that ashtray? Why, yes, sir, I... Well? Well, I, I thought you'd finished with it, so I... What did you do with it? I smoked it, sir. It's drawn. Now, the next place is the fall. You never know, might be lucky. Excuse me, miss. Have you got a young lady working here that goes by the name of Anne, somebody? Why, yes, Anne Fielding. Miss Fielding, will you please not put records down on chairs? Somebody will sit on them. What have you got there? These are the only records of this symphony in stock, and they're not being made anymore. They're extremely precious. Put them back on the shelves at once. Excuse me, miss, is your name Anne? Yes. I'm from Scotland Yard. Did you by any chance happen to be on Hampstead Heath last Monday night? Yes, I, I was at the fair. And did you by any chance happen to be the man named Jack Williams, the bus conductor there? Yes. At least he said his name was Jack, and that he worked on the 24 buses. What's the matter? He's not in any trouble, is he? So you're Anne. I've been looking half over London for you. Miss Fielding, I don't know what you think these booths are meant for. Go outside at once. I shall report this matter to Mr. Osborne. I'll trouble you, madam, not to interfere with the police in the execution of their duties. But what did you say? I'm from Scotland Yard. Oh! <gasps> Hello, this is a surprise. What are you doing here? What happened to you the other night at the fair? Well, my friend turned up after all, and I didn't get the chance to say goodbye to you. Oh, so that was it. Yes. I have been thinking about you. I was going to write you care of the bus company. Were you? Yes, but I didn't like to. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. All this to do later on. Miss Fielding, is this the young man you say you met in the underground and went on the heath with last Monday week? Yes. You sure? Yes, certainly. And is this the young lady you say you were looking for on the heath from nine until after midnight? That's right. Oh, just too bad. What is? Well, it means we won't be able to hang you after all. <laughs> <laughs> Can I drop you anywhere, miss? No, thank you. I think I'll go back by bus. 24? Go my route? Yes. Well, sorry to disappoint you, but thanks very much for finding us, Walmart. Oh, it's quite all right. Always out to oblige. Anytime you want anything, don't forget to give us a tinkle. You know the number. Whitehall, 1212. Well, this is my lucky day. Is it? Mm-hmm. But you've got to get off, isn't it? Well, I must get back to the shop, I'm afraid. Yes, I suppose so. Well, that's where you can see. Oh, yes. I haven't paid my fare. Oh, don't worry about that. You know, I really must pay my fare. You're having this one on me. Well, what do you like to do tonight? The pictures or the palette? Oh. I can't make up my mind. What's on the cinema? Some sloppy love thing. Who's in it? I don't know. I've forgotten. I haven't been to a palette for ages. Is the band good? Terrific. Now what do you think you're playing at? Uh, well, meet you at the call house then. All right. See you tonight, 6.30. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mr. Colebrook? Right away, Mr. Colebrook. Oh, Miss Williams, would you take a letter, please? Yes, sir. It's to Johnson and Company. You have the address? Yes. Dear sir, with reference to your letter of the 19th instant, for which we thank you, we are glad to inform you that we shall be in a position to complete your order in a very few weeks. We much appreciate
How's Wimbledon? Oh, fine, thank you, Mr. Colebrook. It's quite a relief this weather to get out somewhere a little bit countryside. Do you live far from the common? No, I'm right overlooking it. I always cross the common on my way home at night. Where were they? Um, we much appreciate. Are you expecting someone, Mr. Colebrook? Oh. Must be a stranger knocking on your private door. Would you mind using Excuse the Excuse me. Oh, hello, Colebrook. Forgive me barging in. I was in the building, so I thought I'd look you up. That's very nice of you. That's all right, Miss Willis. Sit down, won't you? Oh, no, I haven't a second. Have a cigarette. No, thanks. <laughs> of course, you're a cigar smoker. I rather expected to see a high-pressure businessman with a cigar going full blast. I reserve my vices for after business hours. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I thank you for looking in at the yard the other evening. You're more help than you know. I'm glad. I wonder if you don't mind coming along again this afternoon, sir, about four o'clock? What exactly do you want, Inspector? Well, unfortunately, as you know, that gentleman you picked out had an unshakable alibi. Yes, it's a pity. He's a shift looking customer. <laughs> But we don't want to hang the wrong man, do we? Whatever his personal appearance is. So I want you to have a look at some more photographs. I'm still interested in that man you say you saw on Hampstead Heath. Just a moment. No, I've nothing particular on this afternoon. <laughs> oh, good. You're losing a handkerchief. Oh, thanks. <laughs> See you later. I'm still intrigued at how you found out I was on the Heath. Oh, I'll let you into the secret one of these days. Do you remember taking him out to New Scotland Yard last night? Yes. What time? Well, I had met Grubb about half past nine, just before ten o'clock. Settle for the man. Where'd you pick him up? Just outside Madame Tazo's there. I was coming back to the rank. A slim, good-looking fella, without a hat or overcoat. Well, he was slim-looking all right, but he had a hat and Macintosh on. You sure of that? Yes, I'll tell you why. Why? Get me waiting so long outside the yard, I thought he'd gyp me. Oh, he's hardly the place for that. So I had a look around, and I see he's left his hat and Macintosh in the cab yard. Oh, he had, Eddie. Yes. Mm-hmm. That might help quite a little bit. We've added the hat and raincoat. Is that the effect you want us to get, sir? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Nice job, that, sir. All right. Rush those off to the local chaps. See if they can place him anywhere in the Regent's Park district last night. Very good, sir. No? Yeah. Oh, good. Send him straight up, will you? He's here. Get it. Yes, sir. I want you to tail him, that is, if we don't hold him. He didn't see you when he was here last night, did he? No, sir. All right, they'll tip you off downstairs. Up that way, idiot, he'll see you. That way. And Ellis, try and disguise those handlebars of yours, will you? Yes. Regent's Park couple arrived. See you half an hour, sir. Good. What do you make of that young woman's statement, sir? You know, the woman that shared the dead girl's room. Why? Didn't you think it was funny that this man should tell the girl his name was Tom Marne? Well, he wouldn't tell her his own name, would he? But why that of a famous murderer? Just the sort of thing a man with a walk brain would do. Yeah. Funny about the name Colebrook, though. My missus is only saying last night it's somehow connected in her mind with Crippin, the drives in the bath, and the Camden Town murder. Mm, no there are other pals in the Chamber of Horrors. Mr. Colebrook, sir. Good afternoon, Colebrook. Uh, do sit down. Thanks. Ah, uh, excuse me. Yeah? Really? Oh, do that. Hang on a minute. There's a couple downstairs who think they can give us a clue to the murderer. Might be amusing to have them up, don't you think? Yes, very. All right. 
I'll turn them up right away. This will give you an idea of what we have to put up with at the yard every day. Sure, don't mind. I thought I'd rather enjoy the chance of seeing the way the wheels go around. As a matter of fact, these people swear they actually saw the murderer last night in Regent Park. Indeed? And they're positive they can identify him again. Really? Looks as if you're getting a lucky break at last, Inspector. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Come in. Come in, will you please? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Miss Kemp? Corporal Mapolo. Uh, Mapolo. Indeed. Mr. Colbert. How do you do? All right. Do you want to leave? Yeah, I got to be back with the cross in four days. The cross? Yeah, you know, uh, Germany. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Well, I must thank you both for coming up with your information so promptly. Oh, that's all right, Captain. Inspector. Now, Corporal, according to your statement, you took Miss Kemp to Regent's Park last night for a walk. Yeah, for a walk. And you passed the exact spot where the body was found. Yeah, there was a couple necking on the grass as we went by. Yes, that's right. Then Nick went and asked the man for a match, didn't you? That I did. And you heard the church clock strike nine a few moments later. Well, we heard it strike. We left the dance at 8.30. Hadn't been gone more than half an hour. Couldn't have been ten, so... Must have been nine. Hmm? Sounds logical. Perfectly. I see you both state that you believe you'd know this man again. Sure, like a shot. In spite of the fact that you didn't see his face. I don't need to see his face. Just his back. You show me that back and I'll show you your man. Why, was there anything very distinctive about it? No, not exactly, but you see, I'm used to sizing people up. Yes, Nick's a tailor by profession. I know that back any place, wouldn't you? Sure. And the man in question was wearing a soft hat and a lightish raincoat. That's right. Uh, would you say he was an elderly man? No, on the young side. Tell that by his back. Uh-huh. By the hand he gave me the box of matches with. I'll tell you another thing, too. He's not the kind of guy that has to dig up roads for a living. Well, judging by his hands, anyway. A gentleman, then? Could be. I've got an idea. Sullivan, get my hat and old raincoat out of the cupboard. Now, I'm going to suggest that the sergeant here puts on that coat and hat. Then perhaps you can tell us in what way his manly form differs from the fellow in Regent's Park. I can tell you that now. He's too fat. Fat? Hey, you mustn't be unkind to the sergeant. He is on a diet. Oh, uh, no offense. Well, suppose I try. No, no, he, he was a different build to you. More like our friend here. Uh, this gentleman? Yeah. You know, it might be very useful to get a really accurate idea of this fellow's size and build. Would you mind if we tried out this impression on you, Mr. Comer? Seems rather silly to me. Do you mind, sir? Mind? Why should I? Would you sit on that desk with your back to us? This is all very stupid. <laughs> We're forgetting the hat. Uh, his head was bent down, wasn't it? Excuse me. Anything like him? Take a good look. D don't say anything unless you're sure. No need to hurry. There's plenty of time. Well, how much longer is this nonsense going on? It's worse than being photographed. Anything like the man? Yeah. Very. You're sure? Positive. Guy we saw was exactly his bill. Wasn't he? Yes. Except this gentleman shot.
control will seem a bit broader to me. No, I wouldn't say that. Of course, it's not the same back. Oh, no, it's not the same back. Well, thank you very much for being a great help. Haven't they, Mr. Colebrook? I'm glad you think so. I'm convinced he's the man we want. A, he was on the heat the night of the Hampstead murder. B, there's that slip he made when he said Regent's Park instead of Hampstead Heath. And we have that cigar on him. At least we would have if that idiot hadn't smoked it. That'd be C. Uh, that, as you say, Sullivan, would be C. Then there's the taxi man who brought him here last night after the Regent's Park murder was committed. Listen, Sullivan. That girl was killed about nine. But that taxi man told you he picked up Colebrook just before ten, didn't he? Did he? Oh, didn't he? Yes, of course he did. Well, Colebrook's not going to hang about in Regent's Park after he's committed the murder. So he probably went straight to Baker Street, where he picked up that cab. But that leaves three quarters of an hour unaccounted for. What did he do in that time? Well, one or two pubs around there, sir, restaurants. Yes. And your wife's second home. Well, the Chamber of Horrors. you to interfere with those curtains. Who did that? It ought to have been taken away, but it's holiday time and we're short-handed. Who did it? I came in here last night to lock up and I found him just like that. Some madman, I dare say. Didn't like the way he stared at him, perhaps. Funny how he always seemed to stare at you, old Colebrook. The happy hangman, eh? Proper strangler he'd have made, sir. Hmm. Strangler with a government license. Makes you think, don't it? It certainly does. <laughs> my missus says... Great woman, my missus. Is she, sir? What's she say, sir? Huh? Your missus, sir. I have not one.
you, Victor. Yes, Mother. You're very late, darling. Are you all right? Perfectly. I'll get up, make you a hot drink. You'll do nothing of the sort. I'll come in and say good night. There you are, darling. You ought to be asleep. I know, but I thought you might feel lonely when you came in. I would have been. And I want you to feel that I'm always here for you to come home to. You understand, Tom? Yes, Mother, I do. There's something so sure and so safe. Safe? Of course it is. What a strange thing to say. Well, I only meant that no one could come to any harm in here. <laughs> you been out with friends, dear? No, alone. Walking. Just walking. Is everything all right at the office? Nothing's gone wrong, has it? No. Only you seem so worried. It's chilly in here. Do you mind if I put on the fire? No, dear, of course not. Good old Prince. Do you remember him in my nursery? Yes, indeed. I have several things from the old nursery in here. Do you remember the day I won this? I should think I do. I shall never forget that day, Victor. And the fat boy who got stuck in the barrel in the obstacle race. <laughs> <laughs> Mother? Yes, dear? What was father like? I mean, I was so young when he died. In what way, dear? Was he at all like I am now? In looks, you mean? No, not in looks. Mother, you're always saying that I seem to be worried about something. Was father like that too, always worrying? Yes, Victor. Yes, he was. But I shared his worries. I knew what they were and I helped him fight them. Darling. I know parents can't expect their children to share their worries with them. It's against human nature, I suppose. But, Victor, don't you... Oh, I've often wanted to say this to you before. Don't you think you'd be much happier if you found some nice girl who understood you? If you got married and settled down? You must know a lot of girls, Victor. Though you've never brought any of them here to see me. But amongst them all, there must be one. Surely there must be one. Yes, Mother. I believe there is a girl. Was this sweet of old husband to let me leave early? Going out with your bus conductor, friend? You're a snob, Muriel. Snob? I only asked a simple question. It's just the way you said bus conductor. Bit of a come down, isn't it? I asked that other fellow, Victor. Have you broken with him? No. But I'm going to. There's no point in it now. Okay. Pass them on to me. Tell them you're no smashing blonde. I'll think about it. Hello, Anne. Oh, hello, Victor. You're leaving already? Yes, I'm leaving an hour earlier. I want to talk to you. It's very important. But I'm just going to meet a friend. Can't you put it off? I must talk to you. I can't, I'm afraid. Well, what about tomorrow? Yes, I might be able to manage that. We can have some dinner, then I want you to meet my mother. Look, Victor, why don't we just go for a walk in the park? We can talk just as easily there. What's the matter? You do want to see me, don't you? Yes, Victor. Just this once. What do you mean, just this once? I'm afraid it'll have to be for the last time. I can't stay now. I'll explain everything tomorrow. Anne, where shall we meet? Uh, let me think. You know that big statue near Hyde Park Corner? The Man with the Shield? Mm -hmm. I'll meet you there tomorrow evening at 7.30. Is that all right? Yes, that's all right. See you tomorrow, then. I thought you said you weren't going to see him again. I couldn't help it. I didn't know he was coming. I don't like the look of that guy. I didn't expect you to. Any more than he'd like the look of you. Anyway, let's hope that's the last we see or hear of Victor Colbrook. Um, I'm afraid not, Jack. I promised to meet him tomorrow evening at 7.30 for the last time. But why? Couldn't you have said goodbye just now? No, I couldn't. He's been awfully decent to me. There's no reason why we shouldn't part as good friends. I'd rather you didn't see him again. I'm sure you would. Don't worry. I don't like it, Anne. But I promise you, it'll be for the last time.
I know, Jack. You've told me for the hundredth time that you don't like Victor Cole. And you've told me for the hundredth time that you do like him. But not as much as I like you, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Oh, yes. Oh, this looks good. Hors d'oeuvre or soup? Soup, please. Two soups. Roast beef and Yorkshire? One. Steak and kidney pudding. Well, it looks like boiled gammon. I like gammon. Look, what can we have? Omelette. Dried eggs, I suppose. Two omelettes. Two omelettes. Ice cream to follow. Lovely. If there is any left. If not, baked apple. What can we have to drink? Beer, red wine, half a bottle of red wine. You shouldn't have ordered wine. Why not? Can't we celebrate the same as anybody else? Now, if Colebrook had ordered wine. Oh, you mentioned Victor Colebrook's name once again. I'm sorry, Anne. I know it's foolish to be jealous after we've only known each other a few days, but don't forget I've known you for months and months. Oh, it sounds silly, but ever since that first day on the 13 bus, I, I knew you were the only girl for me. I felt that way about you too, Jack. Ever since that night, I lost you on Anne's teeth. You see, I'm scared I might lose you, Anne. That's why I dislike Cole Books. He's got so much that I haven't got. And, well, I'm afraid he'd take you away from me. He couldn't do that. You see, everything's different now, Anne. Once my ambition was simply to be a good engineer. But now there's a reason for that ambition. I love you, Anne. More than anybody could love you. I know every boy says it to every girl, but you must believe me. I love you with all my heart and soul. I love you too. Ria. <laughs> Nothing out of the ordinary. Might be a report on anyone's movements. Where is he now? He was at home, sir, when Barnes took over from me last night. All right, Ellis. Don't let up on him. He can't give himself away sooner or later. It's only a question of time. Very good, sir. Morning, sir. What do you want, a cigar? Now, what is it? Another of those Stranger postcards, sir. Why didn't you say so? All right. Oh, Sullivan, I'm flattered. It's addressed to me personally this time, instead of the big four. That's what I've been waiting for. Get me the assistant commissioner, please. What do you say, sir? Poor old Conway. Not getting very far, are you? Seven unsolved murders and another tomorrow. That's today. Yes. Oh, good morning, sir. It's Conway here. Uh, can I come round and see you right away? Yes, it's urgent. Another strangler postcard. Thank you, sir. I'll come straight over. Well, as you feel so strongly in the matter, Conway, you shall have all the cooperation and men you want. Thank you, sir. But I hope you get him this time. But if you think you know your man, why don't you arrest him at once and make sure of preventing another murder? We haven't got enough evidence, sir. We simply haven't got a case. Although I intend to prevent him committing another murder, I do want to catch him attempting one. But if you don't and he succeeds in killing again tonight? Well, we've got to take that risk, sir. We haven't had the fellow out of our sight the whole time. He's been under observation. Very well. So you go stand there. You threat by the strangler. Another murder tonight. So you go stand there. You've not been long, dear. I've just been to get the papers. You'll be in to dinner then. No, I've got to go out. I'm late already. I'm just going to the post, madam. Shan't be long. Oh, very well, Florence. Anything wrong, madam? No.
Victor. Victor, what has come over you? What's wrong? What do you mean, spying on me like this? Creeping in the room and watching me all the time? Why are you staring at me? The look on your face frightened me, dear. Ah, yes, the look on my face. I know that look. I'm like him, aren't I? I must have stared at you as he stared at me so often. But he won't stare again. Because there's no face. No face! I smashed... Victor! Now you'll be able to tell everybody that you know I'm mad. Not that you're merely thinking. Oh, don't, darling, don't. You do think it, don't you? You're convinced I'm mad. Well, perhaps I am. I don't know. I just don't know. Oh, Mother. I wish I were dead. My dear boy, what is the matter, saying things like that? When I flare up at you like that, I know I'm doing it, but I don't want to do it. I just can't prevent myself. It's just, just that you've let your nerves get the better of you, dear. Oh, that's all you think it is, dear? Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you'd only see that nerve specialist, he'd make a different man of you in no time. Different? I don't want to be different. I want to be as I am, as I was born, as I was meant to be. Not like somebody else. Where's my notebook? You got it? Where is it? No, dear, I haven't got it. Uh, perhaps you put it in your pocket. Pocket? Got the search warrant. Anything for Mary? No, sir. Nothing. I don't know whether it means anything, sir, but according to his report here, that fellow Colebrook sometimes goes to a gramophone shop in the city. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, sir, you remember that bus conductor fellow we had up here over the Hampstead Heath job? Mm. This shop happens to be the one his girl works at. You may have got something there, Sullivan. Mm. Perhaps she's the very girl that Colebrook into. Put up the number in the phone book. No, good. The Saturday they're closed. Oh, have you got the girl's private address? No, sir, we didn't bother to take it. Blast all that bus conductor fellow. Uh, he lives at Victoria Way somewhere, doesn't he? Yes, sir. Look up his address. I'll put out an all station score for him.
Madam, are you in bed? Oh, oh madam, whatever happened? Oh, I'm all right, Jolly. I'm all right now. Can't be true. What can't be true, madam? Is it something to do with Mr. Victor? He's mad, Flory. He's raving mad. Oh, no. Of course he's not. He is. He is. It's what I've been dreading ever since he was born. But he can't help it, Flory. Whatever he's done, he can't help it. It's in his blood. It... I'd never have married his father if I'd known. It was there. That same terrible look came into his father's eyes sometimes. But I helped Harry. I helped him to fight it. And, and I never thought. I've watched over Victor. I've tried to guard him. I must go to Hyde Park at once. He's gone there, Florrie, and I've got to find him. I've got to at once. I, I can't let it happen again. Night. You've recovered pretty quick, haven't you? I'm not feeling so good now. Take him away. Mrs. Colbrook? Anyone in? That's odd. Have a look in there. Good dinner getting spoiled, that's all. Come on. This must be his room. Man, gramophone record. Wonder what's been going on. Think he's bolted? Won't get far with Ellis on his tail. Another murder tonight. Hmm. We'll see about that. Hello, unfinished whiskey here. Uh, leave it unfinished. Someone's been burning some papers. Aaron, Regent's Park. That's been McLaren, Regent's Park. Can't get away from that. Torn out of his diary. Yeah. It's trying to threaten again. Someone started to cut this one out. I think I've got something here. Hmm. See that? Hmm. It fits. Hmm. Here, look. Same type of postcard. Yes, we've got a case against him now, all right. Next time Ellis turns, I'll get him to tell him to make an arrest. Now, Smith, has Ellis. What? Where? Was there a girl with him then? Oh, the fool! <laughs> Inspector Morton, put me through. What's happened? Ellis followed Colebrook into Hyde Park and lost him in the crowd. Hello, Morton. I've just heard about Ellis. 
Yes. Have you warned the local stations? Well, do it now. Yes, every man they've got standing by, and all our own, too. And send out a general call on him right away. Take this down. Wanted for murder. Victor James Colebrook. Age 35, height 5 foot 11. Clean shaven. Medium fair hair and blue eyes. Wearing grey single-breasted suit, light raincoat, and green grey slouch hat pulled down over his eyes. Wanted for murder. Victor James Colebrook. Age 35, height 5 foot 11. Yes, sir. Jack Williams? Yes, what's the trouble? Your girl, Anne Fielding. Anne, what about her? You met her first on Hampstead Heath, didn't you? Yes. She had an hour appointment that night in Mystery. That's right. What's happened? Any idea who the man was she intended to meet? Yes, fellow by the name of Victor Colbrook. Why? He's wanted for murder. What? Wait a minute, not so fast. Know where she is now? Yes, she's meeting him in Hyde Park. Where about in Hyde Park? Achilles statue, you know, Hyde Park corner. Where's your phone? Here. Not late, am I? Only a few minutes. I'm sorry. Still, considering I kept you waiting an hour up on the heath. Well, what would you like to do? I don't mind. Let's stroll over here by the lake, shall we? Wanted for murder. Victor James Cole. Here, Florrie. We're too late. Madam, let me take you home. But I must find him. I must. Dry up, can't you? And give the music a chance. Are you serious about what you told me yesterday? What? Well, this is to be our last meeting. I can't believe you're serious. Oh, Victor, I am, I'm afraid. Look, Victor, there's uh, something I've got to say to you. Yes? It's this, Victor. I don't see any sense in this going on meeting. You see... I found somebody else. Well, I must say, Anne, that's wonderful for you. I congratulate you. Who is he? Just an ordinary sort of person. Bus conductor, as a matter of fact. He's going to be an engineer. You prefer him to me? Yes. You see, I love him. I thought I'd rather tell you than write or anything like that. You do understand, don't you? Of course, Anne, I understand perfectly. Well, we can spend the rest of the evening together anyway, can't we? All right, then. Where shall we go? Let's cut across there. Wanted for murder. Victor oh, there you are. I'll switch that thing off. Oh, how'd you lose him? A moustache get in your eyes? Well, sir, it wasn't oh, I I it wasn't. Well, Sergeant, what's been done so far? A complete cordon thrown around the park, and we've had a message. Jack Williams, the bus conductor, says they were meeting at the Achilles statue. Ah, oh, that's good. That narrows the field a bit. He won't walk far, and he won't get away this time. If he hadn't done so already, what are you talking about, Sergeant? Now, we'll have the park cleared from here to Hyde Park Corner and to Marble Arch. Anywhere where there are crowds. Sorry, sir, you can't clear the park without permission of the officer works. I'm the head keeper. I don't care who you are. Those parts of the park are going to be cleared. Now, you'll start at the statue. Yes, sir. You'll do nothing of a sort without permission. He's right, sir. I know. I must have it in writing, sir. It's one of my jobs. Work. Now, look here. Don't worry about him, sir. Let me hop on one of those motorbikes out. I'll get the blasted permission. Oh, all right. Can we have a boat, please? You've only got 20 minutes, sir. It hardly seems worth it. We might as well now we're here. It's getting cold, too. Come on. Of this. Don't stand there staring at me. Go ahead and clear the park. Not until I've seen that permission in writing, oh, sir. Permission be blowed as a girl's life to think of. I'm sorry, sir. I can't do it. Saturday night, the band concert half finished, the park full of people, oh. and... Ellis. Yes, sir. Get the band conductor to play the king and no back answers from him. Right, sir. And if you don't do as I tell you, 
I'll have you arrested for obstructing the police in the execution of their duty. I protest, sir. Protest until you're blue in the face, but do it. Don't go too far. We won't get back in time. Did I want one about the little items like? Let's land and look round before we go back. It's forbidden. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll pull round to the other side where the boatman can't see us. out here because I don't want anybody else to hear what I'm going to say. What is it, Victor? Anne, I understand you better than you think. I know why you're giving me up for this bus conductor, this ordinary sort of person, as you call it. Because you think I wouldn't marry you. That's it, isn't it? Supposing I did ask you to marry me. It would alter everything, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Don't let's talk about it here. Let's go back. We can talk about it just as well on our way back. Well, I am asking you to marry me. I want you to be my wife. We'll go away together somewhere. Right away. I'll give you everything you want, Anne. And I'll be safe. Safe with you. My mother knows. She understands. She knows what she saved my father from. You will marry me, won't you? No, Victor. No, I can't. Help me. Help me, Anne. I don't know what you mean, but I can't marry you ever. Why not? Because I love Jack. Oh, so you prefer him to me, do you? You think he's better than I am, do you? I didn't say that, Victor. You know quite well he isn't. You'd rather have me, but you think I'm too far above you. That's the trouble, isn't it? If you like, Victor. Go on, then say it. Say it, then. You know I'm better than he is. You know I'm worth a hundred fellows like him. Go on, say it when I tell you. I can't, Victor. Sorry. Let me through. I've got to go in. Nobody can go in. The park's being cleared. My girl's in there with a strangler. I'm going in. Strangler's in the park. Oh, that's right. I thought it was funny taking a boat out for 20 minutes. He's out there somewhere. He must be on the island. Here, you leave that boat alone. Come in, Mrs. Colebrook. Now, sit down. Now, what is it? Mr. Conway, it's... it's my son. He's on the Serpentine Island, sir. Oh, don't let them hurt him. You must see whatever he's done. He can't help it. Yeah, 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 Mrs. Colebrook, you stay here. Look after us, Sergeant. Why are you trying to put me off like this? What are you trying to do, make a fool of me? You have what I said. I, I can't think when you're talking to me like that. You're frightening me. What's the matter with you? Oh, so I frighten you, do I? You don't like the way I stare at you, is that it? Go on, tell me I'm mad. Tell me I'm mad, as my mother does. Why am I frightening you? Victor, you are mad. Let me go. Please, let me go. You silly little fool. You think you can treat me like that? You're the same as all the others. You're the same as that woman on the heath. The same as that little fool in Regent's Park. Victor, it was you. No, it wasn't me. It was him, William Colebrook. They paid him for doing what I did. You've had your chance, Anne. You were the one girl who could have saved me and saved yourself, too. But it's too late now. Ah! Oh. 
Sergeant. Yes, sir. He's in the water. Make him for the other bank. Right. Other side. <laughs> Better that spotlight. Better take her straight home, William. Yes. And you'll be more careful who you walk out with next time, young lady. You bet you will. It's all right, sir. I've got it. Got what? Permission from the Office of Works. You've nothing to worry about. You can clear the park. Mm -hmm. 